Um, as she said, my name is Tim Muse, and I work for Community Work Services here in Boston. I'm their program coordinator. I grew up in Gloucester, Massachusetts, started smoking marijuana at about the age of 12. Um, after the marijuana, 13, 14, I started with some hallucinogens, mescaline, and, you know, I ran the gamut of all drugs. Um, I was someone who probably would have been diagnosed with one of the things that they diagnose with kids today because I was deemed a behavioral problem in school. And um, it seemed that drugs kind of helped me cope. No excuses. It's just the way I felt at the time. But eventually, my addiction led me to heroin addiction. So my heroin addiction, I grew up on the docks of Gloucester. And um, I'll just say it in this way. The criminal element is present on the docks of Gloucester. And I, I, you know, I got involved in some low level crime, which moved into what I can only consider medium level crime. The sad and tragic story is that my actions were responsible for the loss of another human being's life. So at one point in my uh, act of addiction, I was arrested for murder. I pled guilty to manslaughter and I was sentenced to 18 to 20 years in uh, state prison in Massachusetts. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts says that I have 53 adult arraignments and five incarcerations, and I'm not going to argue with them. It's been almost 30 years since I've been arrested, and my life is quite different today. But my background is extremely important to describe how my present can impact others. So I found out about ATR by the most important promotion tool that there is, word of mouth. I got out of prison with a gigantic booklet of programs. I went to all of these places. I'm fairly resourceful and no one could help me. ATI said, we can help. Didn't know if I believed them at first, but they immediately forked over a T pass that allowed me for one month to take the subway and the bus to try to figure out how I was going to stay out of prison after serving a little north of 19 years. Not only did ATI pay for my transportation, they told me if you meet us down at Marshall's, we're gonna buy you some clothes. And I showed up down there and I, and I bought some presentable clothing so that I could go in and attempt to get the path of my life on track and it, and it helped with my self-esteem. ATI also referred me to a number of different other programs around the city of Boston, CWS being one where I currently work, community work services. But I wanna say this, you know, ATI asked me to be on this video, and I am certainly honored that they asked me that, but I'm not really here for ATI's hierarchy. I'm here for the folks that ATI benefits. ATI was a huge part of saving my life. Let me tell anybody listening to this call, I am not the guy that I want on the streets of your city and towns strung out and looking for money. I'm not that person. You don't want me there. ATR helped it so that I never, ever have to go back. Not even God can change the past. And I oftentimes use my past to help propel my future. You know, I have a wonderful job at CWS. I love my job. But here's the most important thing for folks that want to know if ATR is successful. And I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but sometimes I do that. I work with dozens of ATI participants a quarter, dozens of them. And they light up when they talk about what ATI is doing for them. Right now, I believe the most important thing for ATI that they're doing is they're paying for scholarships for folks to stay in their recovery houses. I could barely stay in mine. It was 170 bucks a week. The stress was enormous. I had never been on a cell phone. I had never been on the internet. Worrying about how it was going to come up with my weekly pay was almost unmanageable for me. And I'm a pretty durable fella. You know, it was overwhelming. ATI took some of those bricks off the cart I was dragging around. And today I push the cart around with other people on it. And ATI is really, really part of that success story. I believe for programs like mine to have folks who can empathize I empathize with the folks coming through the door. I don't have sympathy for them. I don't feel bad for them. I empathize with their situation. And I believe that that is an important element of what we do, what we do in continued care and continued services. I see the questioning eyes when they come through our door. You know, there's a lot that they want to talk about. And what we do and what I've learned through my path in recovery is to try to make people comfortable by letting them know I get it. I empathize. I've been there. But to be able to help them, it makes me feel like I fit. I have a purpose. And ATI helped this human being find his purpose.